Hi, I'm Jake Laverne, head of product here at Docker, uh, and I'm really excited to be uh, to be joining you all in this community all hands. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of time to just recap the past 12 months uh, of development uh, that we've been doing here at Docker, uh, especially focused on uh, developer experience. Uh, so with that, let's just uh, let's just jump right in first with a thank you. Uh, I just want to thank everybody in the community. I want to thank all of our users and customers for uh, for using and supporting Docker. Um, it's really helped shape uh, what we've done with uh, within the product. And so over that past year, it's been uh, it's been very heavy usage, like I said, about eight million uh, or a little more than eight million docker desktop downloads. and that's uh, uh, in in part uh, due to all the work that we've been putting into the product. twenty four new features released, uh, really doing uh, what SJ was talking about, taking sustainable docker, making sure that, um, uh, that we're uh, taking all that investment, putting back into the product. We've had over 37,000 internal commits on the Docker product alone. Uh, we've been working to add partners, uh, both Docker verified publisher partners, but also desktop extensions partners, um, and just making tons of improvements, usability improvements, uh, work on developer environments and extensions, uh, OS specific improvements. We're going to get into a bunch of them. Uh, so diving right in, those usability improvements to Docker desktop, um, we've done things around bulk action, so making it much easier uh, to take actions on multiple containers or volumes at one time, sort of saving you, you uh, time, making things more efficient. Uh, we've got uh, UI-based settings for container run, so being able to, uh, to provide initial settings for your containers directly from the user interface when you're starting that up. Um, improvements to logging uh, through the Logs Explorer extension that we've released just makes it easy to both scroll and search uh, and really find uh, and, uh, log entries from across uh, all of your containers that you've been running locally. Uh, we've improved the Docker menu just for faster boot up times, easier access to extensions. We've made sure that it's easy to keep Docker desktop up to date. Developer environments, um, lots of activity here. We uh, released Compose V2, so that's now in, uh, in general availability uh, and help us deliver fixes to you faster. Uh, but as importantly, maybe even more importantly, we've acquired uh, Tilt.dev. And so we continue to make heavy investments uh, in the Tilt.dev uh, open source project. Uh, and we will continue to do that going forward. And in addition, we're bringing uh, a lot of that team's know-how to bear on uh, on Docker Desktop um, and on Compose and the ways that we can make it easier to run um, more complex local development environments. Uh, we are constantly doing user research. Uh, snap that QR code there if you want to participate and help us shape developer environments or in general help us shape um, shape Docker Desktop. Extensions and the extensions SDK. We've really uh, made it easier for anybody to take Docker Desktop and uh, extend its capabilities, really extend its uh, interface and, and functionality. We've had a bunch of, of partners jump in to give us uh, more developer productivity uh, right there in one place. Uh, so there, uh, everything from, uh, from Anchor to Portainer, it's great to have those available uh, directly within Docker Desktop. We've also made development for Kubernetes easier. Uh, so folks like Octeto or Ambassador Labs with the telepresence extension uh, make it easier, easier for you to do uh, development in a Kubernetes environment. Um, and you can choose or build your extension. So uh, if you don't see the one that you want, we highly encourage the community to lean in um, and create your own extensions. Uh, we love uh, when people expand the functionality of Docker. We've also been making a ton of OS specific improvements uh, across the board, across all three major operating systems. So on Linux, we introduced Docker Desktop for Linux. It was uh, one of the most highly requested features on our public roadmap. Uh, and so we delivered, and that gives uh, all of our Linux users access uh, to the Docker desktop specific features like extensions, dev environments, um, and all the features that, um, that we build out in the future around Docker desktop. Uh, Mac OS, we've made a bunch of enhancements, especially around uh, performance, making sure we're supporting uh, the latest M1 and M2 chips, uh, as well as uh, uh, improved file sharing support. 
uh, for Mac OS operating systems. Um, and on Windows, we've got uh, virtual machine and virtual desktop support uh, specifically for Azure uh, and for VMware, just making it easier uh, if you work remotely uh, with a remote Windows desktop. And then a ton of open source contributions just to make uh, the developer experience of Docker better. Um, so improvements to Docker build, uh, you can see we've got support for here docs. Um, we've been working on caching uh, so we can get better cache reuse. We've added support for open telemetry and build X, um, as well as a number of additional uh, GitHub actions uh, that use Docker build. Um, there's a whole video, what's new in Docker build. Uh, I encourage you to watch and you can see all the things that we've been doing over the past year there. Um, in addition, we're, uh, we're augmenting uh, container D integration. So we've got an experimental feature um, that we're, we're announcing uh, today that really allows you to use container D for pulling and storing images as part of, um, uh, as part of uh, Docker, Docker. And we, we've done that through uh, open collaboration with the community via Project Moby. We really encourage you to jump in um, and, and join Project Moby to learn more. Uh, and then of course, we've been making uh, uh, a, a lot of meaningful open source investments um, through the acquisition of two companies, Tilt.dev, as I mentioned, and Nesty Box, uh, and very importantly, uh, continuing to maintain and support and contribute actively um, to both of those open source projects. Security and trust, um, again, a lot that we've been doing within, uh, within the Docker product itself to expose uh, ways that you can trust uh, the, the tools that you use within your tool chain and trust also uh, the, uh, the images that you rely on for building out your application. So software bill of materials uh, lets you get at all of the components in your container images, including dependencies, you can just run uh, the SBOM command and get uh, and get in-depth insights into what's inside of your uh, inside of your container images. Trusted images, um, so we badged uh, Docker Hub images where uh, where log for shell scanning has been done, um, so you can know uh, that we've got that sort of trust and security there uh, on that front. Uh, we've got new. Docker verified partners that I mentioned, uh, as well as Docker sponsored open source programs. You can know uh, more details about the images on, on Docker Hub. Um, and then we've made an acquisition, uh, an important acquisition of Atomist, and we're working on uh, container insight, security, and trust for dev teams, for dev platform teams uh, across your entire open source stack. Again, the tools that you use within your tool chain, as well as um, uh, the open source that you use in building your applications. So lots more to come there. And you're going to hear a little bit from uh, from uh, Jim, Jim Clark soon uh, from Atomist, uh, who's going to talk about software bill of materials. Um, I mentioned those Docker verified publisher partners just to shout out to, uh, to a handful of them, uh, Datadog, Sneak, uh, Circle, and others. Uh, we're just happy to be continually extending that uh, that program so you can know where, um, where your images are coming from. So what's next? Uh, SJ mentioned earlier, uh, DevX, uh, our developer experience in Docker desktop. We talked a lot about what we've been doing. Uh, we're gonna talk uh, even more about some of the ideas coming up. Uh, but as I mentioned, um, and as Scott mentioned, trusted open source is another key theme of what we're delivering uh, going forward. Uh, and then doing that in a way that we embrace uh, an open Docker, uh, uh, an ecosystem of partners that we work closely with to drive, uh, uh, to drive extensions uh, to Docker and to the entire uh, container ecosystem. And so you all inform the roadmap. And I just want to uh, reiterate that uh, there's a public roadmap, and you can chime in uh, and, and and give your feedback. Uh, but what I want to do is just dig in a little bit more on developer experience and and some of the roadmap concepts there. So I think when we step back and think about the software lifecycle or software development lifecycle, easiest thing to think about is we're doing development um, on our local machine. We're coding and testing. It's just a great experience. You can 
sort of rapidly iterate um, and that feeling of, of, of getting past uh, uh, something tricky that you're working on, seeing your, your code working and, and, and doing what you expected it to do is, is a great feeling. Um, and then typically what we see is we then go from our local development environment first through sort of a, a continuous integration cycle, right? Where we might be um, committing our code, uh, most likely committing our code to a source code management system. Um, and that's gonna trigger a more extended build, right? Because we're not just working in isolation. Typically we're building software in the context of, of other developers, other teams that have uh, multiple services that are being managed. We've got some dependencies there. And so traditionally uh, what that's meant has been that we're going to use a continuous integration cycle as we commit our code, we're going to end up running, automatically running um, builds and tests um, and getting the results back of those builds. And that's to test how our code is functioning within the, the broader uh, set of uh, potentially microservices based um, systems that, uh, that, that, uh, that our code needs to work within. That loop can be, uh, can be a little slow, but, um, but it's, it's the traditional approach to understand our software in context. And then of course, um, when all tests pass, when our build is clean, uh, we're, we're continually deploying software in an ideal case um, to our production environment, often a Kubernetes or set of virtual machines or otherwise. And, um, and then uh, what we get back as developers um, is production logs, or metrics or alerts, especially when something's broken. And we can roughly break this whole cycle down to uh, to the inner loop. Um, so everything that's happening uh, on our local machine and to some extent what's happening within um, the CI process and potentially within um, other non-production environments like staging. And then the outer loop, uh, everything that happens as we, um, uh, as we push and deploy updates into production. And the question that we ask ourselves a lot at Docker is, uh, is couldn't this inner loop be better? Isn't there a way that we could make this flow of continuous integration and getting back build results feel a lot more like that local development experience, even though I might have dependencies on other systems or services that need to really be integrated and tested? And so this, was, this question was a, a large part of what prompted us um, to acquire Tilt. There's just so much good work in the Tilt uh, open source project um, that we wanted to foster and maintain. Uh, but it's also the question that we continually ask ourselves from, uh, uh, from a product perspective, couldn't this be better? And really we want to explore all the ways that, uh, that we can make uh, uh, this loop feel tighter uh, and better, make it feel more like I am doing local code test, um, even when I'm dependent on other teams and other services. So we wanna expand that collaboration and make that loop much tighter. But in addition, we've got lots of other things going on across trusted open source, um, across the ecosystem and partnerships. Again, I encourage you to, um, to chime in on our public roadmap. And with that, just thank you again. I appreciate uh, everyone in the Docker community um, and we wanna just keep on making uh, Docker a better product for you all. Enjoy the all hands.